Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This is take two of a, of a game that I watched. Well, the first take was an initial take. We'll get going here with uh, good old Dioblo in his Kronwagen. We have since found out that he has three marked it. He's got two right here, so he has three marked it. Part of it on the strength of this game. This is a game that, after I got done with the first video that I made, that the sound was goobered up. If only I you know, had a checklist or something to check my sound. Nah. Nah. We don't need that. <laughs> first time I saw it, I said, what have I just witnessed? This is an absolutely massive game. Absolutely massive game. And more so for it being an actual real game and not some South America farming action. You know what I'm saying? He's in his cron, he's top tier, he's got a three tier battle. This is all very good. It does decrease the amount of hit points, but it does allow him to bully the living snot out of tier eights. And he's got Himmel's Live Oaks Dwarf, Dwarf Himmel's Live Oaks. Charging in here to take the ravine, he's got a 268-4 with him and some other tier eights in trail. The 268-4 is nice because that allows him to be really aggressive. They're not going to be that interested in trying to push that thing, especially with the Kron and several other guys. Now what the enemy team has brought is a 215. What do we have here? We've got a 215, the VZ, a 65T, and a Caliban. So I'm liking the odds with this particular loadout and there's still some more guys piling in. So right off the bat the purple team's in big trouble over here. In general this side has an advantage in my opinion. And we're just going to go up here and just start absolutely waylaying this AMX. I want you to notice where he's aiming with his heat right here. That's the turret. So a couple of those shots were aimed at the 65T just above the track, so he's staying out of the tracks. And I believe that to be a conscious decision right there. It's something to think about when you're dealing with heat. He is firing his heat. He's running food. This does not have field mods finished as of this particular match. I did not see his loadout at the beginning. The poor 215T is just giving him all kinds of shots, and then we got shots on this guy, and we nuke the VZ, and right off the bat, I mean, just no kidding, 2,622 damage in two clips. We have hit and penned every shot. Mainly on the strength of being close and good aiming, and a little bit of dispersion health right there, but hey, you know what? He took the right shots at the right time. Notice he's not in the tracks. Watch this one and this one. There you go, nicely done, and where do we go here? Into the turret. I like this too because he took the two shots off of that guy, left him on pretty low hit points and shifted over the 215 and thumped him. Very nicely done. And like I said, it's how did we how did this even happen? I don't know. We're at 4000 damage. We're uh, 2 minutes and a half into the match and we're at a damage total that most people would be pretty happy with even at tier 10. You know, not the best players, they wouldn't be that happy with it. But uh, in two and a half minutes, I think nearly anyone would be. You know, a little bit of help with dispersion there, helping us out. We missed. That's our first miss and non pen The only thing about this particular move, and I thought the way he did it's good. He's probably done this before. The curve right here gives you a little bit of cover from the dudes camping back here. It's, a, it's harder to hit you as opposed to being out here in the flat area taking shots. So he came up along here. This is one of those very small intangibles that you need when you're playing at this level is to use these positions correctly and this is a really nice little move right here to cover up from a lot of the shots now there are some you know you can get underneath the train tracks and, and sneak a shot yada yada but he's used the terrain to the max extent possible he's gonna hang out here with one shell I think he's looking for somebody to get lit now, his team is not doing so hot in the town right now and of course we've got the old Herder, we won the flank, we're pushing. It's not a terrible decision because if you look at how many of the enemy team are back in the middle or pushing into the city, there's not, probably not a whole lot of tanks here. What I was worried about is the JPZ, but you can see it's in town. Very nice. Where's the 110E4? We don't know. We're about to find out, but he is not here either. So we come in here, we have that relatively fast reload, and we have one of the more unlucky things here. I think maybe if he'd have reloaded early, who knows, but there you go, he gets one shot. Looks like one maybe went into the post, the metal post, and he goes, starts moving. So he takes the shot, he knows that thing's going to die pretty quickly, and then he hits C and hits the reload and moves on to the next damage. But if we pause for just a second, we can see that nothing good is happening at the cap. 
we have a situation where we could possibly get capped out of some of their faster tanks get there. Good news is the T-95 is anchoring the defense for the moment. There's a Su-130 hiding in the buildings, and it looks like the Progetto is headed back, or at least supporting. So we're going to come in here and bully this poor Conqueror. Unlucky for the enemy team, one of their heavies, one of their better heavies that could have helped out quite a bit over here against all these hold-down monsters hid in the back. And he's about to pay the price. Watch. I want you to watch the shot selection here where... Diablo aims, all right? Watch this. He's got the hatch. Okay, he takes that, minimizes the return possibilities. The guy exposes his back, and then he puts the hatch up in the air again, and just absolute takedown of the Conqueror there. Nice selection on shots and decisions. 6,467, my friends. We are four and a half minutes into this thing. <laughs> Only one kill, but he has been dropping a lot of pain, and then the 50B makes an a an appearance and he gets shut down. Put one into him. Put two on him. He dies. We move right to the next one. See how fast he moved? He was already he already saw that guy. I don't even know how that pinned. So I think it went to the back of the turret and pinned the side of the back of the turret. That was very strange, but he got it. And we get moving again. We hit C and we're moving because it looks like we're gonna fight our way back towards where we can support the cap. The T95 is dead. Still the C130 and the Progetto. This was a questionable one for me, but it was probably the most direct route to keep the gun in the game. If he'd have gone all the way down the tracks, he'd have had a long drive before he could do anything. So he's going to move along the middle here, but unfortunately, obviously I'm sure he's worried about it too, but with the enemy owning this whole northwest corner and the edges and all these spotting positions here, and you're out here in this low area, you're just really out in the open. So he finds the Skoda, that gets him lit, and now he's taking return fire. He's going to finish off the Skoda. Notice again, he's not aiming into the tracks, he's aiming right above. And he starts moving, that Char is, is having his lunch right now. We get a couple hits, he fixes it and gets moving. We've lost three shots to it, so 1,102, and just like that, uh, we have almost a one shot, not quite. And unfortunately, we're going to have guys lighten us up. I think he's hoping the... I think he's hoping that the... Uh, Couple bounces right there. The char didn't have a shot, but he did. And now we got to get out of here, right? 8,526. A couple hasty shots in right there. I don't know. He might have been able to get into the lower plate a little bit. He also was probably trying to minimize his exposure to the other guys over there. There is a JPZ in the area. Now we're going to bail out of that position. And we get lit, which is a bummer. Notice he's going to try to use that building a little bit. We're just hoping we don't get killed. If they shut Deal Blue down right there on that spot, more than likely the purple team wins because we're going to have a, a bit of a comeback here. T-49 dies. Comes up to the tracks, taking a look this way. I don't know if he was thinking about headed ba heading back, but now we've got guys, and I guess maybe he's just looking for this better position right here where he can use his gun depression. That guy's behind the building. The 103 is behind the rise in the road right there. I'm almost tempted to knock that building down, or at least start doing it. But it looks like he's just going to look for other people to give him the opportunities. His team should have been trying to knock that building down. That guy pushes out. I think, yeah, there he is. Might have been worth a blind shot, but he's waiting. Charfu Chiris taking on the Progetto and the Su-130. And now we're just hanging out. Looks like he's clicking... Didn't see where he was clicking. B8. Yeah, you want spot. So he's clicking over there. He's like, hey, you two guys back at the cap. So we've got some fairly low hit point tier 8s, or at least a tier 8 and a tier 9. And this was very fortunate. He finds the, the char, which is an extremely dangerous tank at this point in the game, even low hit points. Catches him out and nukes him, which is a really good situation for his team. Drops a shot on the JPZ. He's going to put another one on it. Holy cow. Nicely done. And we're up to 9,654. I told you guys. Four kills on top of that. I told you. It's one of those games where you just look at it and go, where did all this damage come from and what has happened? His gun has been singing most of the match. Been a few dead spots as he repositioned. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's unfortunate. We get a bounce on the TS-5. Kind of looking for a shot there. There we go. Put one into him there. And one more as he makes a bad angle. To the guy that's shooting him, takes him down, and we're down to just three heat rounds. 110E4 is out in the open. 
His 122 dies, but the CS-59 is still doing its J-O-B. Brigetto comes in behind and causes the 124 to start looking at him. Just please reload, reload, reload. Get a shot there. Doesn't waste it. Waits. JPZ's wandering around. Takes a look at that. There's only two enemies. And just like that, it's pretty much over. The JPZ gives a little side shot to him. That's unfortunate with the miss. Doesn't matter because we put that one on him. And we go to a reload. We're at 11,161 damage, if you can believe it. And I didn't think he would get another shot. But unfortunately, his Progetto and his CS-59 are not able to close it out quite yet. They do kill the JPZ. And I like this move here. We've got Diobo's moving around for a better angle. So he doesn't have to worry as much about the... He takes a blind shot here, maybe? Yeah. He doesn't have to worry as if the guy was moving. I think he hit him though, I'm not, well uh, maybe not. Doesn't have to worry as much about that barn if he repositions over to the side looking for a clear shot. 11,886 damage and 6 kills. <laughs> and it's no wonder Diablo has 3 marked his Kron before it gets nerfed in the hard mode. That tank has some pretty high requirements for 3 marking I would imagine at this point. Nicely done man, thanks for sending that. Hard to believe, but that is an amazing game. I don't think I might have one 10,000 damage game, but I don't think. I think it's more like 95 or 98. Really well done. Go ahead and congratulate Diablo down there in the comments, folks, for his three mark on the Cron and that fantastic game. That's all I've got for today. We will see you.